Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And a good morning to you. It is Thursday. It is July 9th. I always look down because I'm never sure. Right, we never know. We never know. No, of course, you know, uh, everybody's, you know, COVID-19 has turned things upside down. Something interesting, uh, one of the busier airports in the entire country over the years has tended to be Atlanta's Hartsfield Jackson International Airport. But there seems to be a new busiest airport in the world. Uh, DFW has taken that title away as the busiest, now busiest airport in the world amid the pandemic. Uh, article from the Wall Street Journal, the sprawling hub with seven runways, five terminals, has more than 90% of its gates and half its restaurants open, typically ranks behind Atlanta, Chicago, O'Hare, and Los Angeles in takeoffs and landings. But due to the instant transformation of the airline biz, DFW does suddenly find itself, at least temporarily, on top of the list as far as, as you said, Sarah, the world's busiest airports. Well, and that transformation is because now airlines have moved to more nonstop flights, uh, bypassing big hubs in the middle of the country. So now the mid-continent hub is back for years to come. Many travelers will find they must connect rather than go nonstop. Here's the stats. In May, DFW had over 12,000 departing flights, edging out Chengdu, China by 86 flights. In June, DFW actually widened its lead over that Chinese airport. World's busiest, a bit dubious of a title in the middle of this pandemic. Even DFW has lost half of its business. It's still seen more passenger flights than just about anybody else around the globe. Yeah, they say they have more than 90% of its gates and restaurants open. Um, they are practicing social distancing, mm -hmm. saying that they have about 150 workers on patrol for uh, to clean the high touch areas. They've added hand sanitizers. And I like this. Well, masks are also required at the airport, but I like this. Employees can get tested at no cost whenever they want. That's smart. Mm -hmm. My, uh, DFW getting it done up there in North Texas. Let's take a look at your GMSA rundown. Former Glee star Naya Rivera is missing and presumed dead. Rivera was reportedly boating with her young child. Authorities now fear Rivera may have drowned. The coronavirus pandemic pushes health care systems to the brink. Cases are on the rise. Arizona reporting more new cases than any other country in the world. The Supreme Court is expected to hand down a major ruling today involving President Trump's finances. The justices are set to rule on whether Congress and the Manhattan District Attorney can see Trump's taxes and other records. Barr, the nation's top law enforcement officer, recently said there is no systemic racism in policing. But during his interview with ABC's Pierre Thomas, he acknowledged a racial profiling problem. Police body cameras are providing new details about Floyd's final moments. Transcripts from the body cams from reveal Floyd said please to the officers about five dozen times. And he told police he couldn't breathe more than 20 times. If you want to volunteer to take the COVID-19 vaccine before it's widely available, a new website is launched to help you with that. It provides information on all the clinical trials in the U.S. Ivy League won't be playing football this year. The conference is the first in Division I to cancel all fall sports due to the pandemic. LinkedIn wants to help others learn how to pronounce your name. It's the new feature that lets users add a 10-second recording of their pronunciation. The Wonder Years. It is now getting a reboot. Yes, now a pilot is being made focusing on a black family in Alabama during the same time period. In Kansas, that's a four foot rat snake hanging out on a guy's ring doorbell. Its motion sent an alert to Kyle Crane's phone, which is the only reason he found it. And shot the video on his phone at a safe distance. Oh, and I don't You've like got that. The heebie-jeebies just watching. I've I've had mm -hmm. oh, I've had roaches ring my doorbell, alert me. Wait, you've had roaches ring your doorbell? Well, I mean, you know, your your phone goes off in the middle oh, of the night. Okay. And you're just like, oh, someone's here. Oh, yeah. it's a giant roach. I didn't know if you were talking about roaches or like like people you didn't like. You're like that guy's a <laughs> roach, and he roaches. showed up and rang my doorbell. It, it I understand. It's open to interpretation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. Justin. <laughs> so here's the thing. I feel like I've seen a lot of these snake videos on the, on the doorbells, and I'm wondering if this has always happened, or is it just because now we can see it because we have these video they doorbells? They want their time to shine.
I'm with you on more cameras and higher frequency. Yeah, yeah of... I feel like I've been seeing one of these like every week. They want their social media time. <laughs> That's right. My time. Oh man, the heat is on today. We were up at 100 yesterday. We're going to be right back there again today. These are a look at the high temperatures we're expecting this afternoon. 106 in Del Rio, 98 Curva, 100 New Braunfels. Heat index is going to be brutal today too. Probably up around 105 here in San Antonio. And look at the next three days. We've got 100 today, 101 Friday, 103 Saturday. Sunday is at 105. Some big time numbers. The heat index is going to start to come down a little bit. Uh, or at least the the dew points will come down some, uh, but we're still going to be dealing with heat no matter how you look at it. Uh, satellite picture shows we've got some morning clouds out there. Just like the past few days, these will stick around for a couple of hours and then start to scatter out and we'll see mostly sunny skies. Temperatures again right up around that century mark. And by the way, the aquifer has the 10 day rolling average for the aquifer is dropped below 660. So we're likely going to be hearing from saws in the Edwards Aquifer Authority today about stage one water restrictions. Guys. Thanks, Justin. We'll talk to you in just a short while. Right now it's 9.04. You're looking at I-10 and Frio, and there's I-10 at Hildebrand. Some top stories we are following today. He's accused of ramming a police cruiser and briefly dragging an officer. Now that man is behind bars. San Antonio police tell us it started because an officer ran a plate and realized the driver had some warrants out for his arrest. The incident began around 2 this morning near Rustleaf Drive. Not far from Medina Base Road, police say when the officer tried to approach the car, the driver took off, dragging the officer a short distance. Police followed the suspect to Kenny Drive in Somerset, where his car went off the road. Officers say the man tried to run but was quickly detained. A woman in the passenger seat was taken to the hospital after complaining of chest pain. The officer was not seriously hurt. Right now, we're still waiting to learn the suspect's name and what charges he'll be facing. Up to 1,000. That's how many households the Salvation Army expects to serve today during a food giveaway. The distribution is happening this morning outside of the Peacock Boys and Girls Club. That's at 615 Peacock Avenue near Woodlawn Avenue and Wilson Boulevard. This is a live look at that distribution. The food event started at 9 and runs until about noon. The Salvation Army says they will continue to hand out food as long as supplies last. One of the things that set the that set in the severity of the coronavirus pandemic in San Antonio when it first started. I'm sorry, I, I misunderstood that. Go ahead. All right. So one of the things that set in the severity of the coronavirus pandemic was that Fiesta was postponed until November. Okay. Right? Yep. Okay. But with the number of cases still rising, many are wondering: Will Fiesta? ever even happen at all this year. So last week, the Fiesta Commission president tweeted, Fiesta San Antonio is closely watching the developments with COVID-19 and would provide an update soon. Now, Mayor Ron Nirenberg says city leaders have discussed Fiesta and we should expect announcement regarding the event this week. Several fall events, such as the Malaluna Music Festival, have already been canceled. Fiesta is scheduled right now to take place November 5th through the 15th. In your morning headlines, a worker assaulted by a man and a woman in the lobby of a hotel and a hero police officer. It took a chain of people to rescue a uh, driver and a neighborhood witnessed something they don't see every day. A hot air balloon landing. David Sears joins us live from home. And there's the Cowboys jersey on the wall. Good morning, David. Hey, you, you, you like that? That's Cowboys nice. person in my nice son's touch. room. <laughs> yeah, by the time we get done, we'll probably tour the whole house. Who knows? How this is going but anyway hey mark and sarah i want to let you know that we're going to start with some kind of disturbing video so if you got some kids in the room you might want to pay attention a little bit to this it's a man and a woman they actually beat up a hotel employee now that employee was standing next to another woman they're near an ice machine when all of a sudden the suspects the male and female approach the man fires off a punch at the employee hits her christy caldwell then hits the floor then the man starts kicking her. According to Caldwell's lawyer, the couple called down to the front desk because they had some sort of water issue. Caldwell was going to send another employee to check it out, but then the couple showed up downstairs, and that's when the confrontation got started. Caldwell and her lawyer both think race played a part. I was called a monkey. I was told that I wasn't worthy of being on this planet. Now, Caldwell said she thinks the only reason they could have gotten mad when they called down, they were cussing at her and she hung up on him. This all happening in Connecticut. Before police arrived, the couple left, headed back to New York. Authorities have put out arrest warrants and they do believe they will get the couple back to Connecticut to face charges of assault. 
The Caldwell's lawyer will also be pushing for racial bias charges. A police officer being hailed a hero today after saving a young boy's life. That's a burning mobile home in Socorro. That's out near El Paso. The first home fully engulfed. No one was there at the time, but the fire moved next door. Two people were home. Officer Joshua Gonzalez reacted, went in the home to grab the eight-year-old. He said his mind was racing 100 miles an hour. He just reacted. And an off-duty firefighter was actually able to help the woman get out. Police Chief David Burton said, even though there is a lot of tension in communities these days, officers put it aside and just do their jobs. All right, so what do they say? Timing is everything. It was pretty good timing for a diver in Maine. He was caught in a strong current, fighting for his life. Ryan Coit was on his routine lighthouse check when he noticed the diver struggling. He went in after him and showed some very strong swimming skills. But as they got back to shore, they needed a little help. So all those that were looking on formed a human chain and all is good. Gives you a lot of uh, faith in, in humanity that people are willing to help other people. York police plan to nominate Coit for this year's Citizen Hero Award. And finally this morning, you're in Chicago. It's a neighborhood, and yes, that's a hot air balloon, and yes, it's landing right there in between the houses. The pilot did a great job of getting that balloon back on the ground without a hitch. It took off in the morning with six passengers. One of the passengers got lightheaded about an hour into the flight, so the pilot called his ground crew, put it down where he could, as fast as he could. First responders were on the scene within minutes. The woman ended up feeling much better. Thank you very much. Well, her feet were on the ground. And the rest of the passengers also okay. So once again, all is good. But how'd you like to like wake up and go outside and there's a big old hot air balloon sitting, <laughs> sitting in your neighborhood going, Whoa, excitement what? in the neighborhood. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't happen exactly. every day, does it, David? Oh, can you imagine the conversation at the next cookout? You, you know who's full of hot air in the neighborhood, that's for sure. <laughs> Hey, we're coming back to talk Spurs as they get ready to head to Orlando today. And coming up in a few minutes. My face mask of choice today is good old silver and black, David. There you go. All right, there thank you, you. Talk to See you in a bit. bit. Right now, 910, 83 degrees, still ahead on GMSA at 9. How does COVID-19 spread among children and staff at Texas daycare centers? Does anyone really know? We try to get some answers in our Tribune Thursday report. Today is the day. Our Spurs headed to Orlando ahead of the NBA restart. David back to talk about it later in the newscast. Halloween seems so far away, but Hershey's has already unveiled their new spooky treats. We'll take a look at the list after the break. And let's check stocks right now. They're down about 100 points, 25,964. Welcome back. Uber is now offering grocery delivery in select cities. Ride sharing company says it's working with partner Corner Shop to bring the service to customers in parts of the U.S., Latin America and Canada. Users will be able to order their groceries through Uber and Uber Eats apps. Then Corner Shop will fulfill the order and deliver it to the door. Uber says the service will be available in Miami and Dallas later this month. The company says it also plans to roll out new delivery features in the U.S. in the coming months. Well, it may only be July, but Hershey's is already thinking ahead to Halloween. The company is giving us a look at its new spectacular Halloween treats, cookies and cream fangs. Vampire Kisses with a red strawberry flavored cream inside, which is brew Kit Kat with the crunchy marshmallowy concoction <laughs> and Reese's Franken Cups with a green cream. Franken Cups. Uh, Hershey also bringing back some fan favorites for the spooky season, including the Reese's Peanut Butter Pumpkins. Oh, thank God. The <laughs> Kit Kat Pumpkin Pie Miniature and the Glow in the Dark Assortment. Well done, Hershey's. Speaking of Halloween, let's check out how many days until then. We're about 114 days away. Justin, I mean, that's when we're finally going to get rid of these triple digits. Theoretically, theoretically. <laughs> we've had that heat last, well, until October before, but not this year. We need some cooler weather. 2020 is going to turn around. I have faith in that. We do too. We, uh, we, we got to have faith. <laughs> yeah, we do. And, and things aren't so great right now that we just checked the drought monitor this morning. This just came in. It's showing that the drought is starting to expand across Texas again. We made uh, some good improvements as we got into June with some rainfall, but now things have turned back in the wrong direction. There you see the drought monitor and the severe drought now starting to spread east places like Uvalde, La Prior, Crystal City. 
starting to move into more of the severe drought. Here around San Antonio, not technically in a drought yet, just abnormally dry. That's this yellow color, but we could be there soon, the way the forecast is looking. Uh, just dry and hot. Let's check in on Medina Lake too. 63% full. It is still falling. It's down about 18 feet now. It's down seven feet over the last six months. And the numbers will probably continue to tumble there too. Heat advisories across a large portion of the state, not here in San Antonio. Again, we're just shy of that threshold, but uh, we got to be careful anyway because uh, those temperatures will be awful hot this afternoon. And heat advisories will probably continue to be uh, put into place next couple days as uh, this heat really builds. Here's a look at today's forecast high temperatures and the forecast heat index. The heat index is the one in yellow here. So 100, the forecast high, but it's going to feel like 105 this afternoon. But the entire state is probably looking at near triple digit temperatures. And if they don't get there with the air temperature, likely going to get there with the heat index. Uh, let's look locally at what we got. And forecast in Hondo 101, heat index 106, New Braunfels 100, heat index 106, Gonzales 98, heat index 105. Uh, just another terribly hot day. And the, the dew points are still up there, so that's why we're worried about the heat index. 83 degrees right now, dew point is at 73. We've got a good breeze out of the south at about 10 miles per hour. We've had some of those morning clouds just like the past couple days. Clouds are thickest here on the northwest side of Bear County and starting to scatter out a little bit more as you work east. But these clouds will be here another couple of hours that will help to keep temperatures in check for now, but certainly not this afternoon once they go away. 81 degrees, Seguin, 85, New Braunfels, 83, and Pleasanton. 80 in Uvalde underneath some of that cloud cover, 82 right now, Carrizo Springs. And the current heat index is already up into the 90s in several spots. Gonzales, it feels like 95 at this hour. It feels like 93 in Katua. Dew points uh, will start to come down. Um, but as we've been talking about all week, it's basically a trade off because, yes, we'll lose uh, the humidity and the, the heat index, but the air temperature is going to be making up for it by jumping into the 100. So either way you slice it, it's hot. Very quickly, let's talk about what's going on across the rest of the country. Some showers and storms across uh, the Midwest. There were some tornadoes there across the plains yesterday. And a system here off the East Coast, Hurricane Center is watching. This could become a subtropical storm, not a true tropical storm, but the Hurricane Center is keeping eyes on that. And it will be moving up the East Coast and producing rain there. No rain for us. 100, the high temperature today will call for mostly sunny skies. 101 tomorrow, 103 Saturday, 105 Sunday and Monday. Both would be records and the heat continues right into next week, guys. Right. Thank you, Justin. Well, we do have some breaking news to get to. The Supreme Court has ruled a seven to, to a seven to two that New York's Manhattan's attorney General? The Manhattan District Attorney District can't attorney. obtain President Trump's tax records. That's right. And a ruling on whether Congress can't get access is coming next. Could come at any moment. But again, another landmark decision. We've been waiting on this one now for a while. And there was word it would come out today. And it has a short time ago. Again, on a 7-2 to two vote, the Supreme Court has ruled the president must share his tax records with the District Attorney in Manhattan, New York. We'll have all those other updates either in this newscast or online at ksat.com. We'll still head on GMSA at 9. Texas Tech wants to see what the new normal looks like, and they're not waiting for the fall semester to find out. Alana Rocha has details on the return of some Red Raiders. That's coming up next. One of the many unknowns with COVID-19 is the risk level associated with children at daycare centers. And Texas Tech is resuming classes with the summer school experiment. Alana Rocha from the Texas Tribune joins us with more. Good morning, Alana. Good morning. Well, state officials are providing little detailed information on the spread of coronavirus in Texas child care facilities, and experts aren't sure what extent children spread the virus. So, Alana, where does that leave Texas parents? unnerved and uh, in impossible situations, really, uh, you know, relying on their providers, uh, the daycare providers themselves to, you know, be following protocols and, and keeping their babies safe. 
Uh, we don't know a lot, and this is very reminiscent of a few months ago when the state was withholding a lot of information, still to an extent is, uh, when it comes to nursing homes and where cases were, how they were spreading, how rampant it was. And we're seeing that again with this vulnerable population, and that's children who can't always uh, speak up for themselves as far as what they're seeing or not seeing uh, when it comes to keeping themselves safe. So we've requested basic data and been told because of health privacy uh, concerns, they can't release it. Uh, we know that 500 plus kids have uh, contracted COVID who are in daycares, but we don't know if those infections have come from inside the daycares, if those are results of you know parents of these children being healthcare workers, which is often the case. Um, yeah, just a lot of unknowns. And so, yeah, it leaves the, the parents to rely on their relationship with their provider, um, you know, to be able to keep their kids safe. A lot of Texas Tech is testing the waters for a fall semester by bringing in about 350 students to campus for summer classes. Talk about the significance of this. Yeah, well, we've seen other uh, university systems, namely uh, Texas State down in Hayes County, that's seen a, a big surge in cases. And among uh, those uh, young people, college age kids, uh, kind of hold off on, on doing something similar. Um, Texas Tech is all eyes on it to see exactly how it shakes out. I mean, 350 kids is a small fraction of the 10,000 plus who are enrolled for this summer session. These are 350 kids across 30 classes, classes that are maybe more difficult to do online, like performance-based art or science labs, things like that. But um, yeah, and there's many skeptics who say no matter how this summer session shakes out as far as if it results in more COVID cases, it might not do much to change Texas Tech and other universities' thoughts on the fall. Alana, with a week left of campaigning ahead of the Texas U.S. Senate primary runoff, a coalition of groups are mounting a massive television ad campaign supporting Air Force veteran MJ Hagar in her increasingly bitter race against State Senator Roy Rest of Dallas. So how high are the stakes in these final days? And it just so happens that both candidates will be guests in the Texas Tribune this week. So tell us about those two events. Stakes are huge. I mean, they both are they're vying to challenge uh, U.S. Senator John Cornyn, a three term Republican incumbent who is well funded uh, in the state. Of course, you know, having his tenure, he has a strong name ID here in the state. Um, so, yeah, it, it's big stakes and uh, not just outside money. Uh, Hagar's campaign is outspending Royce West uh, campaign 85 to one. Uh, so we'll see how those shake out. Of course, this is a unique election given the pandemic, given, uh, you know, just the circumstances of people maybe not feeling comfortable going to vote or, or whatnot. So uh, it'd be interesting to see who turns out. We're, we'll, of course, be monitoring. And today, uh, our D.C. Bureau Chief Abby Livingston speaks with Hagar uh, at noon, texastribune.org. Tomorrow, our Patrick Svitek speaks with uh, Royce West again at noon. You can send question ideas to events at texastribune.org. All right, Alana Rocha from the Texas Tribune. As always, thanks so much. Have a good rest of the week. Thank you. San Antonio Spurs are headed out today and headed over towards Orlando for the NBA season restart. David Sears comes back to share his thoughts. And examining the uneven impact the pandemic has had in our city, a new episode of Case That Explains continues the conversation on the topic. RJ Marquez will join us to break it down. That's next. And more breaking news. Now back to breaking news out of the U.S. Supreme Court in a highly anticipated ruling. The Supremes have ruled 7-2 to two that Manhattan's district attorney can, can subpoena President Trump's financial records. Like Mark just said, it's going to be New York prosecutors who can get those records. However, the Supreme Court won't allow for Congress to get access to Trump's tax and financial records. So you can read more on this right now on KSAT.com. We'll be pushing out more content on that, of course, and looking for more coming up in our top stories on the news at noon. Well, today's new episode of Case That Explains continues to examine the uneven impact the pandemic has had in our city. This week, we're focusing on some existing problems the city had before the pandemic and solutions moving forward. RJ Marquez joined us live from home with a preview. Good morning, RJ. 
Yeah, good morning, Mark and Sarah. Uh, you know, last week we talked a lot about socioeconomic issues and demographics. And uh, this week we really wanted to focus a lot more on the city's workforce and jobs in San Antonio. Uh, you know, why we saw these long lines at the food bank, why we continue to sort of see this, why so many people have needed assistance and lost their jobs or are struggling. And uh, really wanted to focus on what plans there were for a uh, hopeful recovery after, um, you know, hopefully after the pandemic. Well, RJ, the city's economy took a major hit with the onset of the crisis. What did you learn about the local workforce? Yeah, Mark, you know, when you think of San Antonio, you think of tourism, hospitality, amazing food and service. And unfortunately, that's what we saw the biggest hit. Uh, food prep and sales make up for 21% of our workforce, according to labor statistics from last May. So that obviously took a massive hit. Uh, office workers only make up about 15% of our workforce, and that doesn't include tech. That really does not include business. Uh, it's more of administrative jobs that we have. And we think of San Antonio as being a big healthcare city, but only 11% of our workforce is in that uh, is in that specific industry. So we saw a lot of people lose jobs um, that were really in those hospitality food food prep areas. Well, RJ, the coronavirus has only added more problems for people that are homeless. How has that been addressed during these times? Yes, yeah, sir. You know, um, homeless population obviously already struggling. We've highlighted this with uh, several specials that we've done on case at twelve, and. When the pandemic hit, it's now a case of where does the homeless go? Because this is a very highly vulnerable population. The city has made an effort to help the homeless um, with obviously hotels and different ways, but that was not the case really for everyone and not everyone has been able to access uh, that sort of help. So we spoke to a local resident who has been living in storage units that she rents just because she was not able to afford uh, rent at her apartment anymore. She's also seeking help from organizations like Sam Ministries. So uh, we wanted to focus a lot on what those organizations have done. So her story was really kind of a, was a heartbreaking story, but at least she is getting back on her feet. RJ, you guys reached out to elected officials, including the mayor, for solutions going forward. What are some of the responses you got? Yeah, obviously, Mayor Nuremberg has been uh, very busy, but he took some time to kind of speak to us about a lot of these uh, social inequalities that we've seen in the city. And the quote that really kind of stuck out uh, to me from the mayor is really that uh, we are a tale of two cities, is that we do have a good amount of the population that has been OK, uh, that has been able to work from home, that has been able to still not be completely impacted by COVID-19. Uh, but there's a large gap from the people that have been able to do that work from home, like, you know, like myself included, um, you know, and the people that have not, the people that have really struggled paycheck to paycheck to try and, um, you know, make it through this pandemic. Um, but the mayor talked about uh, bridging that gap with a lot more of a tech training, reskilling of the workforce and post-secondary education programs. As far as the council, of course, varying answers, um, you know, for varying districts, a lot of infrastructure issues that need to be addressed. The digital divide also is something that we have talked about in the past, uh, in, you know, access to internet and simple things like fixing streets and core services were pretty big answers amongst our uh, council members. And RJ, before we go, how can we watch this new episode? Yeah, guys, it's available on KSAT.com. Um, it's right there. We publish it every morning, so it's good to go. And of course, it's on demand. It's on KSAT TV, so you can find it on Roku, Fire Stick, most other uh, smart TV devices. So make sure you check it out. And uh, we appreciate everyone uh, that has been able to check out these episodes as we kind of take a sort of a deep dive into a lot of uh, different topics and issues across the, the city of San Antonio. All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, RJ. Thanks a lot, guys. Have a good one. Let's go outside with live cam and we'll bring in Justin to explain current temperatures. Yeah, it's Please 80. explain. <laughs> well, there's not. It's kind of hard to explain this away because temperatures are now up to 83 degrees. We're going to have some really hot temperatures this afternoon, uh, jumping up into the triple digits again. We were there yesterday. I'm really curious to see how long our streak is going to go here of triple digit temperatures, but I think we're going to have uh, quite a long one. Let's take a look at the temperatures right now. 82 degrees, Boulevard 81, Canyon Lake 79, Comfort. And uh, 73 right now, Lost Maples with some cloudy skies there. We're seeing a bit more sun. Temperatures are jumping into the 90s now. Uh, well, at least with the heat index. 92 is what it feels like in New Braunfels. 91, your feels like temperature in Pleasanton. And 86 is what it feels like right now at Stinson. 
the humidity is still pretty thick out there, and that's going to keep heat index values pretty high today. We may go as high as 105 with regards to the heat index here in San Antonio. Pollen count is in. Mold is moderate. It's at 920. That's all we have, but mold keeps kind of jumping back and forth there. Jumped up a little bit today. 100, the high temperature this afternoon. Good breeze out of the south-southeast, and again, that heat index could go as high as 105 here in San Antonio. Guys. Justin, thank you. Uh, per all right, we are getting reports right now of a possible motor vehicle pedestrian accident right now. We've got a ton of units on the scene out there, including fire and police at I-37 and Fair Avenue. And from the looks of things from this transguide picture, it looks like that side of the freeway is currently completely shut down. We don't have any details yet. We could just show you exactly what you're seeing on your screen. We'll try to get some more information and get back to you as soon as we can. is almost here. We are now one step closer to the restart of the 2019-2020 NBA season. Our San Antonio Spurs headed to Orlando, Florida today to begin training. David Sears joins us again live from home to chat about this. Your thoughts, David, as we're finally here. They're headed east. Is it actually going to happen, the, David? The uh, 19... <laughs> I, I, you know that that's that's the uh, that's the million dollar question right there. The 1999 championship banner hanging right there. So I just thought I'd pull that out for you, so we could all remember when and hope for something good to happen. Eight games is all they get to make the playoffs, and there is so much going on. I don't know how these guys are going to be able to concentrate fully on basketball. The atmosphere. Who said it the other day? It was either Lonnie Walker or Dejounte? One of those guys was talking the other day. He just said it's weird. Well, it's going to be very weird. The atmosphere is strange. You're dealing with the coronavirus. A lot of these guys are, you know, in, into, into Black Lives Matter, into the social justice uh, activities and, and trying to, you know, trying to, trying to get their message out on that. So there's a lot of stuff going on. And then, oh, yeah, by the way, go out there and, uh, and see if you can score 125 points and, and beat the Utah Jazz or, or the Portland Trailblazers or whoever you need to play in this thing. So, yeah, good luck with that. It's definitely going to be different. Um, I know they haven't left yet, David, but there were reports yesterday that Kawhi Leonard did not travel with the Clippers. He's attending to some sort of personal matter. Do uh, Kawhi Who? Leonard? Kawhi? Who? Mr. Kawhi Who? Leonard? Yeah, exactly. I, I heard the name somewhere before, but I can't, yeah, you I have. can't, I can't you place have. it. But to your knowledge, is everybody uh, except for LaMarcus going to make the trip this year? From what we understand, from from uh, from the latest uh, from the latest reports, we everybody should be should be headed that way. They're all looking forward to getting out there, and uh, and see what happens. So uh, outside of Lamarcus, they should be ready to go. So we'll we'll see. Like I said, it's going to be weird. So, but I know a lot of those guys. You know, they've they've been practicing just four guys in the gym at a time. So I think that'll change up a little bit once they get to Orlando. They got three scrimmage games before they start the season. On I think the season starts or the the renew of the season starts on July 31st. So they'll have some time to hopefully work out some kinks and figure out how they're going to play without Lamarcus. They play part of the season without him. I just think it's going to be total. I, I think it's going to be so much mental. But there's going to be a lot of physical now. Usually, you know, it's all mental and not that much physical. I think there's going to be a lot of physical now because I think it was uh, Derek White the other day said he's been playing basketball in the pool. So, I mean, you know, a lot of dunking in the pool, I guess. But how did, how's that going to translate to, you know, basketball, full-fledged, game-on-game, five-on-five, you know, into the in, in, into a game that counts? I mean, how's that going to translate? I, you know, it's well, let me throw this seen. at you, David. Do you think these guys are going to be rusty okay. or fresh or a combination of both? Ooh, ooh, ooh rusty. I, 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 I think... My fear is we're going to see some, well, I don't know if you could call it bad basketball, substandard basketball, maybe. We're not going to see, I mean, you know, right now you would be watching the two best, well, they would have just finished three weeks ago, but it would have been the last thing we would have seen was the two best teams in the league going after for the NBA championship two or three weeks ago. And, and what are we going to see? We're going to see a bunch of guys who hadn't played in three and a half months. So, you know, there's going to be some questions as to just watching them and getting out there and, and you know, Clanging. I mean, you talk about building some houses, throwing up some bricks. That's what we're going to see. Oh, that's okay. Sounds like he's leaning over. towards rusty. A little rusty. A little rusty. <laughs> a little rusty. <laughs> Pull out the DW. Just, just a little. All right. David Sears live from home. Rusty. Thank you, David. Yep. That first game coming up 7 p.m. on Friday, July 31st against the Sacramento Kings. Right now it's 941. You're watching GMSA at 9. We'll be right back.
We just want to update you on an accident on I-37 in Fair Avenue. It's a possible MV PED accident. We have crews on the way there right now, but we do know that police have are, be, are diverting traffic onto South Cross Boulevard in an estimated time of closure is about two hours. Officials say to choose an alternative route should you have to use a stretch of highway this morning and just keep checking on KSAT.com for more updates. A, a VPED is police speak for motor vehicle pedestrian accident. Again, we don't know the details and one thing we haven't mentioned, this is affecting the northbound lanes of I-37 at Fair Avenue. Again, it's going to be closed for quite some time. Half police on the scene. Fire trucks just pulled away just a short time ago during that commercial break. But we've got a crew, as you said, Sarah, headed that way and we'll try to have more information coming up in just a couple hours on the news at noon. Well, check this out. Scientists may have discovered a new dinosaur species that roamed the Arctic about 70 million years ago. Just 70 million years ago. <laughs> Based on a fossilized jawbone found in northern Alaska, the creature may have looked like this. The fossil suggests the creature was a baby belonging to a family tree that also includes the better known velociraptors. The baby dinosaur would have been a size of a puppy, but fully grown members of his family could have been as tall as Justin Horn. I'm just kidding. Nine feet. Ah, close. Scientists say they still need more complete, a more complete skeleton to confirm that they indeed have a new species. And as we come back here on camera, last week I got a chance to go to Government Canyon State Natural Area, oh, yeah, North of Square County, and I had no idea. I mean, I knew it would be a long hike, and it was great, but they have dinosaur tracks out there, in, uh, fossilized dinosaur tracks in a creek tracks? bed. Some of them are pretty good size. They're about like that, but there were two different species that I guess had traipsed through that area about 110 million years ago, and this was a coastline on, you know, on an ancient sea, and uh, what happened was those uh, dinosaurs were going through that area, silt and sediment settled in, you know, over the centuries, and eventually erosion revealed some very well-preserved tracks it's out there. It's crazy how they're still preserved. Yeah, all I these years later, and they're protected. They're kind of cordoned off, Justin. Yeah, it's it's a hike to see them, but they're so oh, it cool is. to see. It yeah, is you, neat. You do have to check out. It's, it's one thing you got to see here in San Antonio. Uh, so we've been watching the aquifer pretty closely, guys. It uh, it dropped again today. We're at 658.1. The 10-day rolling average now it's 659.8. What does that mean? Uh, that means that we're going to hear probably from SAWS and well, we will hear from SAWS and EAA today about some uh, stage one water restrictions. Hasn't officially been put into place yet, but uh, this is probably what you can expect. Uh, once a week watering before 11 o'clock or after 7 p.m. You can handheld water any day, any time. And then of course your watering day is going to depend on your address. We're gonna have all this on the KSAT website and we'll have much more on when those uh, uh, water restrictions officially go into effect. Meantime, high temperature today or yesterday, I should say it was up around 100. We're going to see that likely again today. These numbers are going to look very similar to uh, this afternoon's uh, temperatures. 104 is what we got out to yesterday in Carrizo Springs, 101 Uvalde, some of the hot spots, but even places like Gonzales that got up to 99. The humidity was so high all day, the heat index jumped way up there. So uh, we're going to see that again today. 98 in Gonzales, the high temperature, but it'll feel like 105. It'll feel like 105 here in San Antonio, it'll feel like 106 in Uvalde. And these temperatures only go hotter. Uh, so we've got to be kind of careful here as we go forward. There aren't heat advisories in place, but uh, you don't want to spend a whole lot of time outdoors with the numbers the way they are. Right now we've got mostly cloudy skies, 83 degrees at the airport, 82 at Randolph. Pretty good southerly breeze at this point. That helps us a little bit. <laughs> if you're going to be outside, it cools you down some. Uh, visible satellite picture and radar shows all the showers and storms well off to our north and northeast. Uh, these storms uh, packing a punch this morning, but for the most part, seeing away from Texas and you can see our morning deck of clouds. We've got these the last uh, couple of mornings a little thicker today, so it may take a little bit more time for them to shrink and go away, but they will and uh, everybody will be looking at sun this afternoon. 86 degrees in New Braunfels, 81 Canyon Lake, 81 Stinson. You've got 84 in Catula, 85 in Gonzales, already up to 90 now in Victoria. Heat index, you got to factor in the humidity and there you go. This is what it feels like. It's in the 90s in a lot of spots at this hour. Uh, you see the unsettled weather across uh, the plains now moving towards the Midwest. There'll be some more showers and storms there today. And we are watching 
One potentially tropical system or subtropical system. It's not truly tropical, just off the east coast. This is going to move north. Could affect places like New York City. Drop some rain there. Hurricane Center is keeping an eye on it. Shouldn't be a big deal, uh, but it may cause a little bit of flooding. Uh, temperatures today up around 100. Heat index close to 105 here in San Antonio. Look for mostly sunny to partly cloudy skies. 101 tomorrow, 103 on Saturday. That'll be near a record. 105 on Sunday. That could break the record. That is going to be the case on Monday, too, and triple digits last well into next week. We'll be right back. President Trump applying pressure for schools to reopen in the fall. Plus, the Elmo Quarry community is mourning the death of their beloved Santa Claus. Here's today's 9 at 9. The largest number of deaths due to COVID-19 in a single day. Nine more deaths were confirmed for a total of 146 since this pandemic began. More than 6,000 people have recovered, but more than 10,000 remain ill. We're seeing an infection rate of one in 100. So think about a school that has 1,000 students. That means that 10 people are walking in on day one who are actively infectious, not knowing it and spreading it to others. President Trump wants schools to open on schedule, tweeting Wednesday that he may cut off funding to those that stay shut. The mayor of Houston trying to put an end to the in-person Texas GOP convention. Mayor Sylvester Turner announcing that the city of Houston canceled its contract with the state GOP convention scheduled for July 16th. He says the public health concerns outweigh anything else. Fiesta was delayed until November, but of course that could also be impacted. Mayor Ron Nuremberg says he will be making an announcement on that event later this week. So to speak, events, and those are very difficult to manage and, and they cause a lot of spread. Lee actress Nye Rivera is reportedly missing at a Southern California lake. The Ventura County Sheriff says Rivera and, a, and her four-year-old son went swimming. The boy says he got back in the boat, but his mom did not. The Alan McCory Market is honoring a man who's dedicated over a decade to playing Santa Claus during the holiday season. That man, known as Santa Tim, sad, sadly passed away on Tuesday. The Spurs organization has confirmed that they're in the process of laying off employees and include the Austin Spurs and San Antonio FC as part of the Spurs Sports and Entertainment. SSNE CEO R.C. Buford confirmed in a statement that there were been staff reductions as a result of the economic impact felt by the COVID-19 pandemic. The San Antonio Spurs are headed to Orlando today to restart the 2019-2020 season at Disney World. They'll play in what the NBA calls an environment bubble, away from family, friends, and fans. The Spurs, they will be tested as soon as they arrive in Orlando and will be quarantined for 36 to 48 hours before they are allowed to practice coming up on Saturday. Starbucks is offering buy one, get one on any handcrafted drink during happy hour on select Thursdays. The event is from 2 to 7 p.m. All you need is the Starbucks app to redeem the deal. And before we go, we want to take another look at I-37 and Fair Avenue, where the northbound lanes of I-37 have been temporarily shut down for an estimated two hours. You see police on the scene right now. We don't have any details, but we're understanding that a vehicle may have struck someone. We have a crew headed that way. We're trying to get more information and we're hoping to bring you more coming up on KSAT 12 News at noon. Also online at KSAT.com. Other side of the highway does not appear to be affected, but we've got numerous police units on the scene and it appears it's possible that red car up on the left shoulder may be involved in that incident earlier. We had fire trucks earlier, but they have cleared the scene. This is now a police investigation. We say all traffic is being diverted onto the South Cross Boulevard exit. Thanks for watching everybody. Have a good morning. Our crews will see you back for the news at noon.